was an understanding that the king or the chieftain or the leader was married to the land. And the land is the embodiment of the feminine. And if the leader was a bad leader, then the land became the wasteland. If they were a good leader, the land provided them with abundance. And so we are living now in the wasteland. And that wasteland is reflected inside and outside of our hearts, in our land, in our air, in our water. So for those of us who are aware of this and who have woken up to what's going on, it's very difficult to get through every day. And it's very hard to know what can we do? What can one person do? How can we make these changes? One day, I was looking down over my lawn and a fox ran across. And then just after him, a couple of hares, which is kind of unusual. And I looked up again a few minutes later and it was a family hedgehogs running along underneath the hedge. And they're nocturnal and they should be hibernating. And I thought, what is going on? This is like Noah's Ark. So I went outside and I went in the opposite direction to which they were coming, there was noise. And I went down my lane, it's a country lane, across the road, in this beautiful field which had been this thicket of wildness and bracken and gorse and brambles and blackthorn and hawthorn. All of a sudden, somebody who'd got planning permission at the top of the field had done what everybody does. And they'd gone in with a digger and they reefed everything out to make a garden. And suddenly all these creatures had nowhere left to go. And I stood there in absolute horror and realized, I've done this so many times. And that was the end of my career. And I went back inside and I started researching what was going on, what have we done. Farming has become an attack on nature. Farmers aren't supported to do anything else. The amount of chemicals out there mean that there's nowhere safe for them. And the only safe places they have are these tiny pockets of land that we've left go wild, that are sovereign. Bridget was a goddess of sovereignty. Over the years, all those goddesses have been mutated into a kind of a gentle, nice kind of an energy. That's because the monks were the only ones who started writing these stories down. As soon as those stories disappeared and they became only what we read on the pages, but those pages were morphed into something else and they didn't want this power to be there. The real truth of those goddesses is that they were wild, they were ambiguous, they were not gentle, they were, they were as mad as brush in the way that any good wild woman is. They're angry, very highly sexual, there's nothing hidden in them, only truth. They're the truth of what the true nature is when it's allowed to be. We've actually lost nature. It has already collapsed in Ireland. It's not collapsing, it's already collapsed. The wild birds would be the canaries in our cages, so those poor creatures now that we've lost 93% of them. <laughs> Over the last specifically 50 years is when everything really went bad, is the industrial farming chemicals, use of pesticides and neonicotinoid seeds, and gardening. Everything has to change. But what can I do? Only change what I can, which is my world. And my world is gardening. And so I'm stepping up and I'm asking the world of gardening to change. Because we can't plant things anymore. We have to allow the gardens to become their true selves. I'm asking people to give as much of their land as they can back to nature, to let it be sovereign. Wait and you see what happens. It will absolutely empower you, it will change your world. I realise very quickly that people are going to find that very difficult because they're so caught in this space of tidiness, neatness, prettiness. But the earth is like I said, it's the embodiment of the feminine energy. And as women, we've had it with only being valued for being productive or pretty. And so has the earth. Her energy is roaring at us. There's a lack of knowledge and understanding because there's this concept called shifting baseline syndrome, which is a very simple concept. If you ask a child these days in Ireland, what, what does a woodland look like? They'd bring it to a spruce woodland. And they think, oh, here we're in the woods. And it's very sad because that's what they believe is what a woodland is because they haven't seen anything else. That's all that's available to them. There's only 0.001% of our ancient woodlands left in Ireland and that's where all the diversity is. That's where all the hope is, is in those little places. That's where we need to have pockets of diversity that we can eventually allow to spread out. So what can we do instead? Well, we can take our land and we can go outside and we can say, okay, what do you want to be? And I'm going to take out all these plants. I'm sorry, lads, 
I know you are alive, I know you're full of life, but you yeah. haven't developed within the context of the local food web and you're of no benefit at all to any creatures living here. And so you have to go. So it's a huge thing to ask people to do. So instead I'm asking people to give a little piece of their land and to put up a sign in their garden or in their window box or wherever it is and say, this is an ark. It captured people's imagination and it's become a global movement. And now there are arcs all over the world. We've thousands and thousands and thousands and thousands of acres. The website is there to support people to do this. We have a map on the website, but people have written to me numerous times saying we're not putting our maps on the website. We don't want people to know where we are because they're terrified of food security. And I'm asking people to grow their own food within these arcs. So they don't want anyone to know where they are, which is really sad. But the hope in it is that we're going to create a patchwork quilt from the ground up of healed earth, which has stepped outside of this crazy system and said, no, I'm not going to be part of it anymore. I'm going to restore this little piece of the earth back to wildness, back to health. And I'm going to connect with green corridors. So people are now putting up signs in, in their local councils saying this could be an ark on those stupid pieces of green covered earth, which is absolutely ridiculous. Why are we keeping everything neat? When you, when you start to realize Actually, look at all these creatures, they've nowhere to go. Why am I holding this piece of land in this crazy way when I could be creating a sanctuary for many creatures, you know? People don't realise what's been lost. The sky used to go dark with butterflies. The birds were so plentiful. And now we have a silent spring. Every square foot of soil, if it's healthy, has 5,000 seeds in it. We don't need to plant anything. This is where we've gone wrong. It's an industry telling you you have to plant. Stop planting, stop gardening, give it back. We don't need it, we don't need it. And it's amazing what happens when you give it back. And building an ark means stepping in and becoming the wolf, becoming you know, the deer, becoming all the creatures that are missing in the system. So it's not just leaving it alone, it's actually helping and carrying out the ecosystem services that are missing because we've taken all them away. So we have to be part of the system now. It's our responsibility. We built a pond, for example, or we, we brought in some um, log hives. We put in piles and piles of dead wood to make dead hedges to create places for insects to live. And from something that was completely like a sheep wrecked curra, now they have, after a year and a half, peregrine falcons, woodpeckers, badgers, foxes, hares, hedgehogs. They have every type of insect imaginable, all types of butterflies, incredible bird life. This place is hopping. And Joe and Claire's life has been transformed. They never want to go away from home. And it has empowered them so much because now they realize they've healed this one bit. And all we need is for everybody else to take their patches of land and heal the next bit and find ways of connecting them up. I have 2,000 acre farms in America. I have 200 acre farms in Ireland. There's people everywhere in every industry that want to change. And everybody can change. It's just stepping up and saying, what can I do? What can you do to change where I work or what I do? <laughs> Stepping out of the system that's there is the most important thing. I know that everyone in the gardening industry thinks I'm trying to destroy their lives. And that's probably true on one level, but on another level I'm saying, look lads, everything has to change because the reality is we've 10 years before biodiversity collapses. And when biodiversity collapses completely, we won't have humans. We've lost 82% of our insects now. They're gone because of pesticides and lack of habitat. They're not generalists, these insect species, or the bird species, they're specialists. The insects have created very strong relationships with native plants, and not just native plants, locally adapted native plants. They're all very specific. The native weeds that come up out of the soil to heal the soil are what the insects need to survive. And without those native plants and those insects, the whole ecosystem collapses. We need the weeds to feed these creatures. So please stop pulling them out. Please stop killing them. If you have a hedgerow that is not native, there is no life in it. We have to stop looking at our land as something pretty for us to enjoy. You've got to understand this is not about us anymore. It's about them. We're in service to them. 
our role here is to be guardian, not gardener. And it's just, once you start this process, it's incredible what happens so, so quickly. You just become massively protective of all the families that have moved in with you. It empowers people to become warriors because there's not much else being offered to people as individuals to do. And every patch of this earth has to be restored to the true nature. We have a website where you can figure out how to do it. If you have any land, please give it back to nature.